Hi guys, Neil at Italia Autos here. Welcome back to another video on my channel. This week it's going to be changing the amazingly expensive front discs on a and a Bath 595. They are astronomically expensive. Um, I thought they were around £300 for a pair, which is expensive by today's Brakely standards. But each, these come in at a whopping £517 each. Not, not for a pair, each. So they are superly expensive, just purely for the fact that they are two-piece discs. So this front bit bolts off. But what I also don't get is they're sold as two-piece discs, but this piece isn't sold separately. So they might as well make them as one piece, which is really, 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 really weird. Um, so what we're going to be doing today is changing the front discs and pads, and I'm going to be showing you how to do it. So to start, I'm going to put this extremely expensive piece of metal down carefully. Only joking, it's the old one from the other side. So first job, get it up in the air, get it secure, and get the wheel turned to the left so you've got lots of access. First thing we need to do is pop out these pins. So using a flat-ended punch and a hammer, very carefully, a few light taps, and out should pop the pins. I say be careful because you don't want to damage the caliper paint. Unfortunately, sometimes it is inevitable because these pins seize in, so you do have to start to give them a fairly good whack with a hammer. Oh, this pin should be loose now. Just pushing it in and then pulling at the same time will let that pin out. Then you've got the securing plate. And now the last pin should come out nice and easily. Now, if you are just changing the pads, I still recommend you pull the caliper off to clean the caliper out, and it will also make it a lot easier to remove these pads. Before you start the job, open your bonnet and open the cap on your brake fluid reservoir, because as you're pushing these pistons back, the brake fluid will rise slightly, so you'll need to make sure that it's not going to overflow. You may need to take some out. So holding the caliper on is just two male Torx bolts. They are normally very tight, so you will need a breaker bar to get them off. Let's hope you couldn't hear that music playing too much in the video, otherwise I'll be uh, having to do a voiceover. So I'll have to do some uh, voice dubbing. But yeah, the price of these discs how stupid they're the most expensive part they're the most sorry I should say they're the most overly priced part I've ever had to buy but the customer did do some research and he managed to get them from Euro car parts with a 50% off voucher for around 500 quid so um, he did save himself a fair old chunk of money by going to Euro car parts now I would normally Avoid Euro car parts like the plague, but as these were the original Brembo pads and discs, you can't really go wrong as long as they are the genuine ones. We're nearly there with this bolt now. There we go. So, trying to remove the caliper with the bolts out it is stuck the pads are stuck on the lip of the disc so what i'm going to do is just gently tap on the edge of the pad just to bring them out a little bit and it'll also knock the pistons into the caliper a bit more now from the other side with your punch or a chisel just tap on the pad and we should get some movement you've also got to be careful not to tug on the brake pipe there we go we're off so now we've got to remove the brake pads so I'm gonna pop a cloth on here so as not to mark the calipers we now need our little punch again 
Use your punch again. These can sometimes be a right pain to remove. You can pull them out in or out, it doesn't matter which way they go, as long as you can get them free. Now, where is my pry bar? There it is. So with this inner one, as the other one's out now, I'm just gonna try and prize it a little bit, just to get it a little bit free. And there we go. Pad is now out, but never the easiest things to remove. So you can have some proper challenges where I've spent a few hours trying just to get the pins out because the pins have seized in. That was relatively straightforward. That's about the uh, the difficulty you would normally expect from something which has been sitting getting hot and cold for many cycles. And now push the pistons in by hand. Never normally very difficult. Now I'd normally just tie these calipers up out the way with a bungee cord, but as always in my unit, it's gone missing. So I'm gonna have to use a cable tie. It seems a bit of a waste of a cable tie just to hold it up here for five minutes. It's just so we're not putting too much force on that pipe. So now we've got two 12 mils to undo. one of these snaps don't worry as long as you've got one which is still working now I'm going to quick tap around the outside with the hammer just to try and see if it'll free off No joy. So, bring it back this way again. Holding onto the disc a few taps with a hammer and it should come off. Now a good clean both sides with some brake or carb cleaner. So now put the pad on, line it up, and put these pins back in to the disc. One, and two. I'm just gonna keep that there to stop any marks on the disc. Tighten them up. What I'll also do now, just to stop the alloy wheel from sticking to the brake disc, a little bit of copper slip dotted around will always make it that little bit easier to remove a year down the line when it comes to servicing it again. Now we can remove our cable tie. Pop that over the disc, let that rest there for a second. A little bit of tiny little bit of copper slip on the end of these. Just so they do come out a little bit easier because this top one was quite difficult to remove. If your disc is particularly difficult to remove, before you put the caliper back on, get a wire brush and just clean the four corners of the inside of the caliper because they do get filled up with brake dust and uh, road grime, so it does make them a bit difficult for the pads to come out. Now, 
Just torque these bolts up. It's the one with the brake sensor on the inside. Not putting them straight in yet. I am going to give them a little bit of copper slip, a tiny bit, just on the top edge where the pad moves. Talking, it's literally that much copper slip. I wouldn't even say that much, to be honest, a lot of the time. So let's just start placing it in. It's not going to go all the way in because some of the pistons probably need moving in a little bit more. Let's just have a little look though. That's in all the way. So just make sure that's secure so it doesn't fall out. And I'll do the other pad now. Now what you can do, if the pistons haven't gone all the way in by pushing them by hand, use the old pad, not the new pad. Just pop it in between the two pistons and just leave them in a little bit gently. You won't need much force at all. And you won't do any damage to the disc as long as you're not pushing too hard. And now you need to just use your fine adjustment tool ever so lightly and just knock that pad in a little bit. You won't need much. It's a very light tap until you can get the pad over the disc. If you found it particularly difficult to remove these pins in the first place, order a set of new pins and the, uh, the spacer things, and it'll make life a lot easier. You can clean these up a bit. This doesn't need much. It just needs a little rub over with a light bit of sandpaper and a little bit of grease, and then we can use these again. Pop one pin in. Once it's in, just give it a little bit of a tap with your pin punch. Now the final one. If it wants to go behind this. And I want a little pun, a little hit with a hammer to get it in. This and you just hear the, the tone change when you're hammering it in as to when it's fully located. Just give everything a little wipe over because it's guaranteed your mucky fingers are going to get over it. And another wipe of the caliper as well if you've touched it too much. Spin the disc to make sure nothing's catching, as it isn't. And then we are all done. We can put the wheel back on. So now we just want to pump the brake pedal a few times just to get those pistons back into position. And the final job is just check your brake fluid, make sure it's not too low or too high. So there we go, that's how we change the stupidly expensive front brake discs on an Abarth 595, 695. It's also pretty much the same on, on most of the, uh, the Brembo brakes, so you could use this guide for plenty of brakes. Um, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I shall see you in the next video.